Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. Today, let's look at the best printers for crafters and makers. My goal is to help you make the right choice for your projects, whether you're interested in inkjet printing or sublimation printing. Because printers are not all made equal and you need the right printer for the job. So printers come in many sizes and types. I've owned, over the years, I have owned so many printers. <laughs> HP, got one right here, Lexmark, Epson, Canon, Brother, you name it. I probably owned it. I remember in the early 90s having to take out a loan for a printer. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, I, but I have probably used um, every printer at some point since 1988. So I have been using home printers for over 35 years now. Most recently, I've used an HP Envy ink, inkjet printer. That's this one right here. I got it in 2017. So that's just over six years ago now, I'd say. Wait, so when I got it, yeah. It is still going strong. It's a little workhorse. I love this printer. It makes great high quality inkjet prints. It's been very reliable. So HP Envy 7155 specifically is what this one is. But over the last few years, my favorite printer has been the Epson EcoTank, right? Which I have right here. I have a 3830 right here. Now, unlike the HP Envy, which relies on ink cartridges, the Epson EcoTank series has ink tanks. They're easier and less expensive to fill, and the ink just seems to last so much longer, which I love. <laughs> Did you know, in fact, that the average ink cartridge printer owner will spend nearly as much on their first set of replacement ink cartridges as what they spent on the printer itself? Really, right? But with a tank printer like an Epson EcoTank, which uses ink bottles and a tank system to print, you will save more money. By the way, all of the EcoTanks that I will talk about in today's video are listed over at jennifermaker.com slash EcoTanks. I'm gonna put the link up on the screen right at the bottom. There we go. Everything, all, each of these models is listed over there. If you want to, you know, like more information or you want to get one, okay. The other thing I love about the Epson EcoTank series is that their design, it allows for more versatility. You can use them for regular inkjet printing, which is what they're designed for. But because the Epson EcoTank does not heat the ink during printing the way some other inkjet printers do, this means we can get creative and use sublimation ink instead. So Epson EcoTanks can be used for either inkjet printing to make things like regular documents, of course, stickers, print then cut, iron on transfer, stuff like that. Or it can be used for sublimation printing to decorate things like mugs, tumblers, and shirts. Now it is an either or, not both situation. You cannot easily switch between inkjet and sublimation ink in an Epson EcoTank printer. In fact, there is no printer I know of that does that either. But you can choose to use it for one or the other with awesome results. So many people use an Epson EcoTank to do sublimation printing. By the way, if this mention of sublimation is new or confusing to you, just know that sublimation is a special and very cool process that allows you to transfer a special ink onto another surface, like a mug, a tumbler, or a shirt. I have many videos on sublimation crafting. You can learn more about it at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation for beginners. So I have here a whole bunch of Epson Eco tanks, right? I've got the 2000 series back here, the 3000 series here, and these are the low at the low end. And there's the 4000 series in the middle, I would say. And then over here, we have the larger format printers. This is the 15,000 and this is the 8,500, okay? So smaller sizes on this side, larger sizes on that. So what's the difference between all of these? There are three big things to consider, convenience, size, and price. Yes, there are more differences than that, but they're typically less important for us as crafters and makers, in my opinion. So let's talk about each important factor to help you decide what matters to you personally. So first, convenience. 
And by convenience, I'm mostly referring to whether or not the EcoTank has a front or rear paper tray. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate. We're gonna move these printers around as we talk about them. This is the paper tray. So you have to, it kind of pulls out and then you have to put your paper back here, okay? So this is a rear tray. It only holds like 100 sheets and it sticks out a little awkwardly in my opinion. Your paper is just sort of hanging out there exposed to light and dust and humidity, okay? So that's what we see on the 20, the 2000 and the 3000 series Epson Eco Tanks, okay? That is the rear, the rear um, paper tray. And then when you move up to the 4000 and beyond, then we see, I'm gonna put away this link here so it's not in our way. There we go. When you move up to the 4000 series, you get the front paper tray, which is actually not that one. It's this right here. So the front paper tray can hold 250 sheets of paper and it's all neatly contained in this little pull-out tray. It's easier to access because it's from the front, not like up here on the back. And also it generally like takes less space because of that. This tray is only like an inch, inch and a half tall. Whereas when you've got it sticking out the back, that's like, you know, another like eight inches, I'm guessing. I personally prefer to have a paper tray, but you will pay for the convenience of that, of course. So again, the 2000 back here, series EcoTanks all have a rear feed paper tray. If you want a front paper tray with higher capacity, you need to move up to 4000 series like this, or one of these bigger ones here. These both have uh, paper trays. All right, so that's the first one. Paper tray is actually a pretty big deal to me. I don't really like the rear, the rear feed, right? So I, when I use mine, I typically will use a higher series printer just to get that paper tray. All right, so the next size, the next factor is size, specifically print size. The base model of the Epson EcoTank, which is all of these on this side of the room, prints up to eight and a half by 14 inches. So legal size paper. You can do smaller, but the maximum size is eight and a half by 14 inches. But some of our projects really benefit from a larger print size. And there are EcoTanks that can print up to 13 by 19 on this side here. That's a fair amount larger. The uh, Epson right here, 15,000 series offer the large prints and that's useful for both inkjet and sublimation printing. Can you get by with the smaller size? Yes, totally and many people do. But if you think that you will often do projects that require a larger print, you will save yourself time and headaches by just getting the larger size to start with. It's up to you though. I actually, I obviously have many and I actually find myself using the smaller printer more than the bigger one, just because the size, the smaller size is actually convenient for me. So I, I move my printers around actually a lot. So for me, I like having like a smaller footprint, it takes up less space on my work area, that kind of thing. All right, and finally, price. Price always matters, right? Always, always. We can, only get, we can only buy what we can afford, right? That's what we should be doing. That's what I want you to do. So the 2000 series, this one right back here, is the least expensive. You can get an Epson EcoTank 2400 or 2800, um, you know, it's just sort of in that range for under $200 at the time of making this video, which is a pretty good price, really. And then on the far end, the large format printers, like the 8500 and the 15000, those are more like a hundred or sorry, $500 and up. So that's a really big difference. It's more than twice the price, right? Now the other differences between the printers tend not to be as applicable to us as crafters and makers. Do we need an auto document feeder? Probably not, <laughs> but you will know, one of these has one, this one, the 15,000, it's got an auto document feeder on it, whatever, just, <laughs> if you don't need it, it's not a big deal. Also, I doubt most of you need a fax machine, right? Some of the Epson EcoTanks actually still have a fax machine in them, believe it or not. So you can just ignore those features altogether. Don't let that the, the presence of a feature that you don't need impact 
those that you do need. That's what I, I just kind of, I just ignore that it has a document feeder or fax machine in it. I don't care. And the resolution and size of the control panel, which is this part right here, it does vary, but I find it really doesn't matter that much. It's just not that big of a deal. The only other factor that might matter is the speed of the prints. So the 2000 uh, prints at about 10 pages per minute. That's this one. That's the cheapest one right here. The 3000 and the 4000 series is about 15 pages per minute. And the 15,000 series is 17 pages per minute. But honestly, I think this only comes into play if you're printing a lot though. And most of us as crafters and makers are not like sitting there printing out a, several dozen um, sheets, right? Now, if you're planning to use your printer for printing out like instructions for right then you know and it's like 50 pages some of our some of our instructions are really long so in that case you know maybe that matters you know or if you're just really going to do a lot and it's you know just churning out print after print then the speed will matter maybe i haven't noticed when i'm doing a one-off i never really even notice how slow or fast it is okay so now let's talk about ink because this is another place where the epson eco tanks really shine all new Epson Eco Tanks come with empty ink tanks for you to fill yourself. The ink that comes with the printer, always, is the Epson ink in special EcoFit keyed bottles. It looks something like this. Let me show you, actually, so you can see. I'll have to open this one up. This is like a refill that we, refill that we bought, but it looks the same. So this bottle with this cap on it like this. This is an EcoFit bottle and it's actually keyed. I'm gonna open this up so you can see what I mean by keyed because that's like a weird term. So this is the uh, yellow bottle. So it has a screw top. It's actually really cool. And if you look, these are the keys here. That's what they call them. So they actually fit right onto your tanks to fill. So it's very easy to fill. And I love that. It's not like, you know, really messy or anything like that. But it's very important to note and understand that the ink that comes with an Epson Eco Tank, which looks like this, this 502 brand, you can see here it's used with all of these. This ink is regular inkjet ink. It is not sublimation ink. So if you're getting your eco tank for things like print and cut stickers and iron on transfers, where it's just regular inkjet ink, then this is great. You want to use the ink that comes in the box. But if you are getting an Epson eco tank for sublimation crafting, then you do not want to use the ink that comes in the box. You'll want to use special sublimation ink instead. So I like both Hippo ink which is right here, and Printer's Jack ink, which is right here, okay? You can get them both on Amazon, and both come in the special refill bottles. So let me show you the Hippo ink so you can see what I mean. It's got that same cap. You recognize that, right? So it's same thing for Printer's Jack. You want to make sure when you order it that you're ordering, it will say in the description if you're getting that kind, but see? And with this twists off and it goes on just like the, um, the ones that come in your box. So really easy to fill. Okay. So remember you can get, um, you can get them on Amazon and both come in the refill bottle, right? So again, that's Hippo and Printer's Jack Sublimation Ink on Amazon and the same easy to fill bottles. They work great with the Epson Eco Tank. So I want to repeat this part again. Okay. Let's put all these over here. So we have two sides here. All right. So <laughs> if you want your eco tank for regular inkjet printing, use the ink that came with it in the box. Okay. If you want to use your eco tank for sublimation printing, do not use the ink that came in the box. Just put it aside, donate it save it, give it to a friend, whatever, and instead fill it with sublimation ink, okay? Pippo and Printer's Jack are both great ones that I have used and have worked great. 
And one more thing that I want everyone to know is that Epson Eco Tanks are intended to be used with the ink that comes in the box. <laughs> if you use any other kind of ink, whether it's a third party inkjet ink or, you know, a sublimation ink, it will void your warranty. So some folks are okay with that and some are not. So you have to decide for yourself. If you are one of those that are not okay with that, just know that Epson does make sublimation ink printers called the F170 and F570. They are built on EcoTank technology, so they're very similar to the EcoTank, but they have enhanced print heads for better flow of sublimation ink, which means less clogging primarily. I actually spoke to some Epson rep representatives this summer. I asked them all about the the differences between eco tanks and the F-170 and F F-570, and I heard all of the technical things, most of which I don't quite remember now, but the upshot is that there is a difference and it has to do with the, the print head. More of something, <laughs> which I can't remember right now, forgive me. <laughs> um, it's not like I talk about printers every day, all the day, all the time or anything like that. So. Now I have a lot of printers. I actually have both the F-170 and F-572. So I have them all, right? If you want to print sublimation ink from an Epson and keep your warranty intact, get the F-170 or F-570. But if money is more of an issue than the warranty, then a low cost eco tank is going to be more attractive. Many people successfully use an eco tank with sublimation ink and no warranty and are doing just fine. This is a personal choice you have to make. I am, most of the, these days, I'm using my eco tank with sublimation ink when I do sublimation. I'm not using my F-170 or my other sublimation printers. I'm using my eco tank. So everyone, everyone is a little different. You get to make this choice for yourself. So to demonstrate how easy it is to set up an Epson eco tank, Regardless of how you're going to use it, we are going to unbox this brand new EcoTank printer and fill it with ink together. And then you can ask me all the questions that you might have about using an EcoTank. Does that sound good? <laughs> all right. Oh, and actually, I see in the comments another thing I want to mention, and that is um, the front versus back feed. So when you have a printer, with a paper tray, like right here. Can you see this one? I'm gonna open this one. It's got paper in it right now. The paper goes in and it has to curl around and come up and be printed across the print head. So it does like a, a U-turn in your printer. When you're using one of the uh, printers without a paper tray, the paper can actually go from the back and th right through your printer without having to do that U-turn. So as a result, it can be a little easier to feed unusual things like thicker, like cardstock, because it doesn't have to bend and there's less opportunity for it to have a jam. Okay, I'm really familiar with jams. <laughs> I remember back when a jam would like be like a huge deal these days. It's, it's not quite, we can always fix it, but I remember like taking my printer down with a jam <laughs> back in the 90s at once. So that's something else to consider. Like if you mostly doing inkjet printing, and you are gonna be doing a bunch of cardstock, you're probably gonna want this rear feed, even and then you just don't keep your paper stored in it, you take it out, make sure you have plenty of room, and because it doesn't do that U-turn in it, like it does with this one, okay? So that's an, another factor as well. Okay, so let's make a little space here and unbox this together. We're gonna do the, we're gonna go through it. We're gonna see how it works. Not rehearsed, not edited. Who knows what will happen? So here it is. Get my my uh, knife out, and we'll start opening it up. I don't see my knife, so we're just gonna use a pair of scissors. <laughs> That'll work. And the reason I have this one, we don't have a thirty a three thousand series here, but one thing I want everyone to know, because I see this question all the time is, you know, I got, so for example, I have several videos on setting up an Epson specifically for sublimation. And in that video, 
I think I used a 2400. I don't even remember which one I used. What I want you to know is that Epson EcoTanks are kind of all the same. So it doesn't really, really matter that much which one you get, which model you get. The setup is pretty much the same. Okay. So it doesn't, this doesn't matter. So you can follow this with yours. You can get yours out right now and follow along with me. All right. So in the box, we have, <laughs> let me just move this stuff here. We need more, all the space we can get. And then I'm going to put it on the overhead so you can see exactly what is in here. And let's change, zoom out a little bit more. All right, there we go. A um, DVD, why are you sending DVD still? That's crazy. <laughs> Like, this is this, do we, I cannot even put this in my computer anymore. I have no idea why they're sending these. Okay. However, the setup is in here. Okay. So save this. This is like, like your directions. Okay. Some ink, right? See, there's that um, eco fill keyed bottle, the auto fill bottle. They're very cool. We bought this Epson on Amazon, by the way. I don't think I got it during Black Friday, but Epson e Epsons are often on sale on Amazon. So more more bottles. So remember, if you're not gonna if you're using this for sublimation, just do not put these in here. Sometimes people will be on autopilot and they'll just put them in. I'm gonna go ahead and use these for inkjet. We're gonna we're gonna replace our HP Envy with this printer here in the office. So we're gonna use this as an inkjet printer. But it all works the same whether you're putting in sublimation ink or not. Okay. So it's all wrapped in a bag. Let's uh, myself a little space. I think I can get this out without asking Greg for help. Depends on how awkward it is or how stuck it is in the styrofoam. There we go. Okay. Anything else in here? Always look for your other things. I do not see our power supply in there. Must be, let's hope it's in the printer. Because <laughs> I do not see that. That would certainly make this go really short, huh? Oh, wait. Here it is. <laughs> it's here. Okay, let's take stock of what we've got. We've got our ink. This is regular inkjet ink. They will always send you that. Got our power supply and we have our instructions. Okay, I'll sit down. <clears throat> and this is a really awesome printer, by the way. This is why I'm switching. Nothing against HP. I love this printer that I have, but the Eco Tanks are just really awesome. And like I said, being able to fill the tanks, I really like that better than cartridges. Okay. So let's set our ink off to the side, our power supply. Unlike yesterday, I'm going to look at the directions so I don't mess it up. I have set up many eco tanks, but you know, it's always good to follow their directions. No DVD though. We don't need that. We can make a wind chime or something out of that. All right. Start here. Whole bunch of safety stuff, which you should always read. So first step is to unpack it. Don't open the ink bottles until you're ready to use them. Yep. Uh, remove all the protective materials from the product. So you see all these pieces of tape. Let's get all these off. Definitely need those off. There's some on the front. There's might be some foam somewhere. I feel like there's also something inside from when I've set these up before. All right. All the blue stuff. Um, I'm, I would normally tell you to keep all your packing material, but honestly, you're not going to want to ship your Epson Eco Tank. Epson, once the tanks are filled, you should be really cautious about, like you would never want to turn them on their sides. The ink can actually come out and make a huge mess. So, okay, so this piece of tape here is stuck. Let's see if there's anything else here. Yes, and I actually have another, another camera I can show you. We're going to try the other camera too, so you can see more. Let's see here, this camera, there we go. So, oh, then you have a nice shot of my Christmas trees. Let's fix that. You don't need to see my Christmas trees there. How about, nope, 
that's not what I wanted. Nope, that's not what I wanted. There we go. And then this one here switches to another camera. Me. And then I need to switch what I look like. <laughs> I have a lot of cameras here. There we go. Okay. That's better. Make sure you can see that. Does that look right? Okay. So there's tape on the back. Let's get that off too. Okay. So yeah, you're really not going to want to ship your eco tank. So whatever, just get rid of it. Okay. So this piece of tape right here on the side, you're going to need to open up the, up this to get to it. Okay. So let's go ahead and open it up so you can see inside, right? It's not going to hurt anything to do that. And then you take this out. This is over the print head assembly. I believe that's what that is. And so this is inside, you can see right in there, all of our, everything. These tubes you see right here, this will carry our ink to the print head, which I believe is this. And then right here is where our tanks are. There we go. There, that's a good shot. So these are, this is the eco tank itself, right? And again, this is, it looks this way on all the Inco tanks. There's no, like, there are, there actually is the 8500 has six tanks, not four. Most of them have four, um, but they look just like this. And here at the very top, these little white things you see here, that's where we put in our bottles, which we'll do together. So all the packing material is off. We can close the top here. Okay. All right, next. Uh, connect the power cord to the back of the product and to an electrical outlet. Okay, so the product cord is this thing right here. Power cord, right? And it's got a little twisty tie on it, so we take that off. I always go the wrong way every time. <laughs> like, every time. Okay, so it's really easy. It's almost always in the same spot on every printer. It's right back here. I want you to be able to see both of them. So this is the power switch itself, but right here, all right in here is where we do our power. So it looks like this on the end. And it, oh, I'm sorry, this is not the power switch. This is where we put the power in. This back here is the connections. So you can do, um, I think it's ethernet, or maybe that's a telephone. This one might have a fax, I don't really know. And, um, but that's USB, I believe. This is the power. The power switch, of course, is on the front, actually. All right, let's make sure that's in there and seated well. That looks, that feels good. All right. And then I'm going to plug it in. I have a little outlet over here. Okay. It's plugged in. All right, <clears throat> step number two, choose a setup method. So uh, the Epson Smart Panel, which is this, it's got some plastic on it, let's take that off. And they always tilt up, if you've never noticed that, like so that you can get to them easier. So it can help you set up your printer through an interactive step-by-step -step process <laughs> using your smartphone or tablet. To use your mobile device for setup, continue to step one. Uh, can, and then you can, there's like a little QR code that here you can use here. And, uh, but if you don't want to use a mobile device for setup, skip to the fill tank sections. So I'm going to skip the mobile device. I don't use, I don't really print from my phone. So we're going to just skip to filling the tanks. Okay. Just remember, if you would like to use your phone to set this up, you can. All right. So It says to skip to the fill tank, so let's just do that. All right, warning, keep the ink bottles out of reach of children and do not drink the ink. That's very important. Okay, uh, 
It says with a scanner unit raised, this is the scanner unit right here. So we want to lift that up. It will stop. There we go. So with this raised, open the ink tank covers, which are right here. And then open the cap for the black ink. Now this is important. I have had many of you write in and tell me that you accidentally put the wrong color ink into your ink tank, into your eco tank. So please be cautious when you're filling your ink tank so that you do the right one. They are all labeled here at the bottom. I'm going to tilt this. Actually, no, let's go to the overhead. You'll be able to see them there. Black for BK for black, C for cyan, which is blue, M for magenta, pink, you know, and Y for yellow. Okay, CMYK, right? Well, CMYK. K is for black. <laughs> All right, so let's get out. I said, okay, it said open up the black one. So we're going to go ahead and do that. There's the black, it's open. And then open the cap for the black ink take. Okay, we did that. I'm trying to do this carefully, everybody. Okay, so unpack the black ink bottle, hold the bottle upright, and slowly turn the bottle cap to remove it. So we need to get this out of the plastic. Okay, by the way, you might be tempted to shake your ink. Uh, don't shake your ink. Um, I know that it might be like, it may, might make sense unless it tells you to, okay? Um, I'm checking to see. Do not shake or squeeze the ink. It says that right here, okay? So just don't, just, you know, over, try to resist the tendency. Oh, you know, it's liquid, right? Most, most of us would shake it. So don't shake your ink. So we're going to unscrew the top. Just like that. And you can see that keyed shape on it, right? Right. So just like I showed you before. So now we're just going to insert the ink bottle into the filling port. So all we do, and there's a, you can, let's switch to the other camera and see if I can zoom in for you so you can really see that well. There it is right here. So we're just going to take this ink bottle like this and we're just going to put it upside down like this and it goes right over it. Can you hear it? So it's filling it up. It's in there. And if I scooch this back, you can see it filling right there. So let it stay there while it fills. Wait for the ink to fill the tank. Do not squeeze the bottle um, or allow it to contact any other surface. It'll be really messy. You don't want to do this. Now, the cool thing about these is that they really won't start flowing until they're in place. So typically, now I can't say I've like unscrewed the bottle and just tried to see if I could get it to come out, but generally it won't. You don't have to be like super careful when you put it on. It's okay, it's like when it makes contact, it opens up the aperture and the ink flows. So, all right, so ink flows into the tank and stops automatically when the ink tank is filled to the upper line. So you don't have to stress about this at all. It will stop. I can hear it starting to kind of slow down in fact. So look, so you can like visually see how much ink you have, which is also kind of cool. And I think I've almost, I don't hear it making little gurgling sounds anymore. So I think that it's done. Okay, so when the ink tank is full, remove the ink bottle and securely close it with the bottle cap. If any ink remains in the bottle, close the bottle and store it for later use. Okay, so, so see how it's not like dripping, right? It's not dripping. So we're going to put the cap back on. And of course, if you were choosing to use sublimation ink instead, you would be doing this with the sublimation ink bottles. These bottles right here. This is sublimation ink. Looks really similar. Look at this, th these caps, right? So this process is the same whether it's Epson ink or a third-party ink or sublimation ink. Now Epson does make um, sublimation ink, but don't be fooled in thinking that if you put Epson sublimation ink into your eco tank, that's going to be okay. It isn't. <laughs> they only want you to use their sublimation ink in the F170 and F570. Uh, but 
We're filling this up with inkjet ink today so I can use it as an office printer here at the studio. So it is just the regular ink. Okay, so we'll continue on. We can close this one and get out the next bottle. There's our black. Let's get all of our ink. By the way, this is what the um, Epson Teloisha ink looks like. See, it's different. Can you see? This bottle I got with my F170. And this bottle is what comes with the Epson EcoJink. So they look, they have that same cap, but they are definitely different. Okay, so there's our blue, yellow, and magenta. Yes, Lorelei says it's nice to know that it stops when it's full. Okay, so let's go in order. We just did black, let's do cyan. It helps to be really organized when you're doing this so you don't accidentally put the wrong ink in. So cyan is what we're going to do next. Just cut off the top there. Remember, we're not shaking or squeezing it. Just screw off the top. And then just put it all right onto, here we go. Let's prep the other two. And so, yes, Pam says, why am I not using sublimation ink? That's because this is an awesome printer with inkjet and ink in it. So I want to use this printer. I mean, as you can see, I have many printers. This is sublimation. This, got, this one's got sublimation ink in it. This has got sublimation ink in it. This one is not fully set up yet. This one has regular inkjet ink in it. I have two more over there with sublimation ink in it. I would like a new printer to show everyone in my videos how to do inkjet printing. So we're gonna be switching to this. So I'm putting in regular inkjet ink so that you understand that. But we could be doing the same thing with the sublimation ink. That's how easy this is to do. It's literally just the different ink. That is, a lot of people are, con that's confusing because you're like, oh, I'm converting my printer and I, technically you are, but it's just the matter of the ink you put into it. Okay. This is done, and this bottle actually looks pretty empty to me. There is a tiny bit left there, so I guess we can save it. And then we close the top. And then next is the magenta. Take off the top. And open up the, make sure you're doing the magenta, always make sure, and then put it on. And if you put it on and you don't hear it gurgling, <laughs> for lack of a better term, then it might not be on right. You might have like kind of like put it in there in a different angle, pick it up, put it in again. And then yellow. And you know, you might uh, could you do them all at once and they don't they won't fit in here all at one time. So we did them one at a time too. And then the cool thing about this ink and the, and the eco tank itself, the ink lasts a really long time. You can, you, you can get so many prints out of these. I don't have the exact number um, in my head. I saw it just this morning when I was working on my notes, but it's pretty awesome. I love the eco tanks. They are, in fact, really well named. They're really economical. Okay, that one's done. And yellow. Close magenta and open up yellow. There we go. Looking great. And Brenda just says, this is what's so great about these lives is we learn from each other. I agree so much. This is, this is really, really nice. Denise says the ink really does last a long time. I agree with that. Uh, Catherine says the ink does last a long time, but watch out for expiration dates. Absolutely. So every bottle that you'll get will have an expiration date on it. Let's look and see if we can find it on these ones that we're using. I feel like it's going to be right here. Let's see if we can get close up. See, it says 5 2028. So this ink is actually good for five years. That's the Epson ink. The sublimation, the Hippo ink, I think they put that on their box. Let's see. This might be, 
Yeah, this is one I've had for a while. I use it for teaching. It's actually expiring right now, December 2023. And then my printer's Jack Ink. Let's see where they put their expiration date. It looks like it is not on here. I feel like it must be somewhere, right? Or else how would you know? I don't see it anywhere. I don't see it on the box, so I don't know. Maybe it's hidden somewhere and I don't see it. Usually there is an expiration date listed. So like it would be a mistake for me to put this into my printer. I mean, it's probably okay. <laughs> it probably is. It probably isn't actually a big deal, but I probably, would I want to leave that in there for a year? Like if I'm going to do a whole bunch of projects and go through it, it's probably fine. I probably, but like next year I, I, I will, I'm planning to keep this set so I can just use it for teaching. All right. So the yellow is done. Let's put the cat back on us. This ink is really messy. So store these somewhere. I mean, once the cap is on, they're fine, but don't like accidentally just set it somewhere and just forget about it. Okay. So let's close this up here. I'm going to show it to you so you can see it again. Close that. Make sure they're all closed and then close the cap. And there it is. We have all of our ink filled. You can see all of our tanks are filled up. Awesome. All right. So we filled up our tank. Close the ink tank cover. All right. So now we're going to raise the control panel, which is this thing right here. We can go ahead and close this too. All right, so we're gonna power it on now. The power button does differ on model on this one. And the 2400 looks like they're over here on the left. Whereas actually it looks like they're all on the left. Yes, the power button on all of the Epson Eco tanks is on the left. So let's power that on. The button turned on. <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. We're going to select our language. I'm going to see if I can lift this up some more and show you what I'm doing as I do it. All right. Can you kind of see this right here? There we go. Okay. So this will, you know, I, I have set up a lot of apps in the eco tanks. The setup does vary a little bit, but generally this is how it works, okay? So if it's not exactly the same, follow the directions that are in your documentation. It's not a big deal though. All right, so we have English. Hopefully you can see that, okay? So we press, okay. So some of the eco tanks have a touch screen, some of those control panels. The lower end ones don't have a touch panel, okay? So we just press okay. If you have a touch panel, then just press on it. All right, scan the code to set this printer up with your smartphone, right? So we can totally do that, but we're gonna continue to set up without the app. So I'm gonna say, so we press these arrow buttons here to move through the panels. So we want this one that, so it's got this little red bar around it and we say, okay. Okay, it says processing, can you see that? Okay, I might be able to move it back a little bit further so you can see it better. There we go, okay. When the message to see the start here sheet appears on the LCD screen, press and hold the question mark help button for five seconds. Okay. <laughs> we'll wait and see if it does that. Yes, look, it did that. Okay, five seconds. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Okay, it says make sure that all the all color inks are filled to the upper line on the ink tank, which we they are. We filled everything up. So you you want to fill your tanks before you do this step. So that's important, okay? Again, it doesn't matter if you're using the ink that came with it or some other third-party ink or sublimation ink. You want to have your tanks filled up at this point. Okay, and then select the start button to start the ink charging. So the ink charging is when it's going to pull it up through the lines and bring it into the tubes. It's gonna actually, so the ink has to be in there for this part to work. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and press the OK button to start it. It says initializing, please wait. Do not turn the power off until initialization is complete. This takes about 10 minutes. And it's kind of loud, isn't it? So this is a great time for me to take questions. And now maybe I can kind of move back. Can you all hear me still okay? I can move back a little bit here. Maybe it won't pick up quite so much sound. Uh, but this is the sound it makes. So, and it's literally pulling up the ink. So if you got a question for me, ask. Uh, let's see here. Thank you for all the kind comments too. Oh, okay. Cyana says, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Does the ink, with all these printers I have, does the ink dry out with your printers? How often do you use it? Okay, so that's a great question. We actually have, back in the other room, which you can't see, a big wire rack where we keep all of our sublimation printers. We keep them plugged in and turned on. You should, by the way, always keep your printer turned on. This is just a general rule. You don't want to turn it on often. Keep it off. Keep your printer on all the time. Okay, this is the advice. Um, it'll last longer that way. Okay, so our printers are turned on, and that means that those printers that have auto um, maintenance, like the Sawgrass, which I have, is doing its auto maintenance. Most of them don't. The Epson F170s and F70s do not have any auto maintenance. I, I, I even asked Epson about that. They don't want to waste ink, they told me. But what we do is we print from them on a regular basis. So for the printers that we're not using regularly, which is honestly actually a lot, <laughs> it's not just me. Remember, I have a team of 30 plus people. So there are other people in the studio. We are making things together. Other people are using the printers, not just me, right? So some printers being are being used. Uh, like I've gathered these printers from all over, all over our studio. Our studio is about 5,000 square feet. It's a pretty big place, actually. So like this one, it was in our Ruby room, which is over there, which is an office, essentially. This one is used at one of our maker stations. This is the one that came from my house originally, and I come here and I use it for demonstrating. So all sorts of reasons. So they actually are printed to pretty frequently. Um, and you really do, whether it's inkjet or sublimation ink, you really want to print to your printer regularly. You don't want it to sit there for six months or a year not printing to it. Regardless of whether you have inkjet or sublimation ink in it, it can clog your lines. For example, in our house, we have an Epson 4800 4000 series in our workshop downstairs in our basement. And I printed to it the other day. I haven't printed to it in like three months. It's like a like a hobby printer that we use, like kind of the household printer. And Alexa has her own printer. Greg has his own printer. So I will use that one at home. And it had clogged, right? And it's just inkjet. So, so that's something that I think everyone should understand about printers, inkjet printers. You do need to print to them regularly. My general rule is once a week. Once a week, we'll do it. That said, if you forget or something happens, it's generally not the end of the world. There are many things that you can do to unclog your printer. And that just starts by using your control panel to do a print head check, right? So that's a topic for a different day. But so, yes, yeah, so we actually, we do print to our printers often. So that's a great question. Uh, and I have unclogged many printers. <laughs> too. <laughs> Uh, let's see. How often do you have to change the maintenance takes? Would you believe we have not had to change one yet? Nope. So as soon as we do, I'm hoping to make a video to show you how it works. But I haven't had to. I, clearly, we don't print enough. So for those who don't know, a maintenance tank, also called a gray tank, um, they come in all the Epsons. Actually, I think all printers have them. And when you do a power clean, uh, excess ink goes into them. And I think other, any, I think any excess ink that the printer produces during its process goes into there. So it can fill up. I don't do a bunch of power cleaning, so that might be why mine have not filled up. I think they will eventually fill up though, you know, then over time, but it hasn't happened yet. So when it does, I will make a video for everybody so you can see what it's like to, to switch it out. So but I, that means I have no experience with it either. I just know that it's a thing. 
So that's the reason you don't want to do too many power cleanings because it uses a lot of ink when you do that. And that ink, and then not, not all the ink is going into your maintenance tank. Um, much of that ink is going onto the pieces of paper that you're using to power clean with, but a lot of it is. I couldn't tell you how much though. That I, I yeah. <laughs> Um, Teresa says, do all the Epson Eco Tanks have the same print quality? That is a great question. And I actually compared, uh, I have a whole, in my sublimation for beginners video, I compared print quality. What I've discovered though, since making that video, it doesn't matter. I, it just doesn't matter. So long as you're printing on best quality, they're all good enough. What we're, we're not like doing like, you know, fancy photo quality things on fancy glossy photo paper for the most part. But even then it does just fine. If you wanted like to do prints that were like photo quality, like so the Epson 8500 over here, that does photo quality prints. But for general crafting and sublimation crafting, you cannot tell the difference. And I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a resolution snob generally. So trust me, I'm not, I'm not leading you astray here. <laughs> um, so these printers, all of these do a great job with photos in crafting. Now, when I, there's a difference between photos and crafting and photographs, like print photos where you're going for, you know, maximum quality and depth and tone and everything, right? Like for that, you would want a photo printer. The 8500 will do a great job with that. If you're planning to do a bunch of like actually printing out photos, and I mean, when I mean printing out photos, I mean really on like the fancy paper, that kind of thing. I don't mean just for crafting. I don't mean putting a photo onto a pillow or a mug. If that's what you want to do or make a t-shirt, these are all just fine for you. Okay. Marge says replacing the maintenance tank is very easy, at least on the 3850. Awesome. Thank you for letting us know. I appreciate that. I, I hear differing stories. Some people say it's easy. Some people say it's not. It's probably experience, you know, like personal experience and how well it went too. Uh, let's see here. I, I see a question about ink and I know it gets confusing about what ink to use for, um, for when. Okay. So I want to repeat that again. So if you want to buy your eco tank for regular inkjet printing, so that is things like just regular documents, you know, or making stickers or doing some print and cut transfers, t-shirts or tote bags, you know, where it's just like the iron on stuff. That's, that's regular inkjet ink. That's the ink that comes in the box. And I use it for that too. And then, but if you want, you can actually, from the very start, instead of putting in that ink that comes in the box, you could instead put in sublimation ink. And if you do that, you essentially turn your eco tank and printer into a sublimation printer, right? It's really just a matter of the ink. It's really nothing else that changes. But when you have sublimation ink, you can then put that ink onto, you can have your printer print a design and then you can take that piece of paper with your design on it and you can trim you know like we put it over onto another surface that has like polyester or polymers in it and you can heat press it and the heat makes the ink transfer into the other thing so in what with inkjet we just are printing two pieces of paper or cardstock and we're leaving the ink on that item right there. It stays, the ink stays there. But with sublimation ink, the goal is to transfer the ink. So we actually print onto special paper, sublimation paper, and then we use heat to transfer the ink onto something entirely else. That's another way to think about this. And the two are not interchangeable. You can't, you know, use inkjet to get the same effect as sublimation and sublimation ink won't look the same when it's printed. It won't look as good as like inkjet. So there's a difference, right? Um, so you don't switch back and forth in a single printer typically, right? Uh, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's really not realistic to go, I'm going to do inkjet now. And then next week I'm going to switch to sublimation. And then I'm going to switch back. Like, don't know. You, what you want to do, if you think that this is something you're going to want to do both, get yourself a low cost, 2400 2800 whatever, 200 bucks. Get two of them. Get out your label maker. I have mine right down here. We label everything here. On one of them, write inkjet. And on the other one, put sublimation. 
and then you have two printers under 400 bucks and you have a you can print it both for whatever need you have that was that's to me what i think works really really well okay initialization is complete it says it right here move on to print quality adjustments okay you probably don't even need this sheet of paper but because it says two adjustments right here and it's got that red box around it so i'm going to press ok align the printer to get the best print quality so we can adjust later or we can adjust now which i'm going to do with you so that you can see now i want to know that there is no paper in that comes with your printer there's like like they actually just expect you to do this step they didn't like it would be so useful if there was just a blank piece of paper in the box so we could do a I guess they assume that you need some paper. I'm going to get Greg's help. I don't have any paper over here. I only have sublimation paper. I could use that, but there's no reason to waste our sublimation paper during setup. You know, it, it would work in a pinch, right? But let's just get some regular paper. So regardless of which way you're setting this up, you just want some regular, regular paper to do this. Okay. This is both, this works for both inkjet and sublimation. Hey, Greg. Oh, he's getting some for me. Oh, wait, I forgot there's some back here. I'm gonna close that so he doesn't even notice that I forgot that there's some here. <laughs> I could have just reached back there to get it. Shh, don't tell him. He's being really helpful by getting me some paper. Are you looking for it? Thank you. Well, so there's some paper here. I forgot that there's some. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. <laughs> All right, so this is just regular inkjet paper, everyone. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the overhead. And uh, I'm going to zoom out so that we can see what we're doing here. A little bit better. There we go. All right, so, uh, oh my gosh. So this does have a paper tray. What am I thinking, Jennifer? So <laughs> I told you earlier that the 2000s and 3000s didn't have paper trays. So clearly that was incorrect information I shared with you. The 2000s, I don't think any of them have these front paper trays, but remember I told you that I really like front paper trays. So I know that when I bought this printer, I wanted one with a front paper tray. So this one does, but this is a 3830. So it's got a paper tray, so sorry. Clearly some of the 33,000 series have a paper tray. All right, so forgive me. I am definitely not perfect. Okay, so let's open this up. You can usually squeeze these things right here to widen it, right, for our paper. And uh, this is the paper, by the way, as a long time print, printer user, before you put your paper into a printer, I highly recommend you always fan your paper, okay? This comes from years of Paper Jam, PSTD, okay? Sometimes when you take your paper out of a package, it's not all completely cut or it's sticking together or something. This will help a lot with jams, okay? Um, another thing if you're experiencing a bunch of jams is to put just one sheet of paper into your printer and then it's less likely to misfeed. Another Paper Jam PTSD solution for you there, okay? Paper is in here, so we can go ahead and do adjust, recommend, and say okay. Perform a print head nozzle check, print later or print, let's go ahead and do it right now. Load the paper in, I did that already. Okay, and it's printing. Renee says you are not alone. <laughs> I, like I said, I literally had a printer, like I was out of commission. It might have been ruined. I don't remember it. The jam was so bad. I think it was a laser printer, not an inkjet. And it was a long time ago, but you know, it's a big deal. Okay. So here is our check. Now it says check the printed pattern and select the closer result. So let me hold this up so you can see what a beautiful job it did right out of the box. No issues. So this looks great. Now, if it didn't, if you see any broken lines in here, then you would want to say, you'd want to, you know, use your little arrow key to come over here and select the X, or you use your touch screen, if you have a touch screen, 
Mine is great though, nothing else to do. That said, sometimes you do have to do this more than once. I've, especially with sublimation, I've noticed that um, sometimes when you first put the ink in, so sublimation ink is, as I recall, a little thicker. It's a little bit thicker. And so it doesn't pull up into the tubes I showed you as easily as regular inkjet ink well. So sometimes you'll do this and you're like, it doesn't work. And then you do the, you do it again and you cannot get it. You cannot get these lines right. So regardless of whether it's inkjet or sublimation, if you can't get these clean unbroken lines like you see here with mine, if you can't get it, here's what I want you to do. I want you to walk away from it for the day. Come back the following day. Give it 24 hours to settle in. And nine times out of 10, it'll be peachy keen the next day. Okay. Sometimes it just needs, there might, there could be air bubbles in the line. Maybe it just needs to settle in. I don't even know what's going on in there. All I know is I have told hundreds of people to wait until the next day. And the next day they come back and they say, oh my gosh, it's working. Okay. So remember that if you have a problem, just walk away, clean up your area, <laughs> clean up your mess. And that's it. That's all there is to putting in the ink and making sure it works. But you need to actually get from, okay, so great. We have a, the printer is in here, but now we need to send things to it to print it. And that is where software comes into play, right? It's not like it just magically reads our mind and what we want it to print. We need to send it data to print, right? Now, most of the ink tanks do have a scanner that you can use as like a copier for if for some reason that's the only thing you care about is just making copies you might not actually have to do anything else but since we're all crafters and makers i know that you're going to want to print your own things to it so and you should set it up for that okay so we will continue on we're going to get the drivers because the drivers are really important to getting all of the settings so i could stop here Okay, I could actually, and I, I use a Mac. I can go to my Mac. I can say, hey, look for a new printer. It'll probably find it. So I got, like I haven't got it connected to anything yet, but it, it might find it. I don't actually know. And I could just print to it. It could kind of discover it. And then I could print to it, but it wouldn't have any of the instructions that are specific to this printer in it. And so I think sometimes people do this, they kind of skip ahead and think, hey, I'm good. And um, they're lacking the drivers, okay? So if ever you are printing and you just don't seem to have all the options that you like see on my screen or other people talk about, you're probably missing your drivers. You, whether you forgot to install them or something happens, it happens. Okay, so we are up to step number six, installing software. It's talking about a CD. So I don't, I don't, who uses a CD? It's crazy. I just don't even know. Maybe in other countries. And I, I this is my first full privilege talking right now. I should, I should be quiet. <laughs> okay. Make sure the product is not connected to your computer. It is not currently connected. Okay. We're not doing a CD. We're going to do a USB connection. Okay. So the Epson EcoTanks can do USB. They can do a wired ethernet cable connection and they can do Wi-Fi. Okay, so you actually have a lot of options. So I could use my phone and set it up. I could use my computer and just do Wi-Fi. I am gonna opt for USB. Why? Because USB is the fastest and most reliable connection method in my opinion. So I'm gonna get Greg's help again because they do not include a, a USB printer cable in the box. So that's significant. So if you want to use USB, you're going to need to get your own USB cable. All right. We have a, many of them around the studio. So Greg will be able to find me a printer USB cable to use. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Janet says, can you connect to two computers? You can if you're doing it through wireless. So like if I go right now to my uh, printer, I, I can see uh, all the printers here in the studio that are on my Wi-Fi network. So yeah, so you can have one printer that multiple computers can use using Wi-Fi. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, this is a, okay, it's just a, I'll show, show you what it looks like. 
This is actually a Cricut one. I guess we're using Cricut one, but it's fine because as long as it fits in the back, this is the part that should fit the back of the printer. And then of course, this is the USB connector. So let's make sure it, print, it fits, but those, they're pretty generic actually. It's nice that Cricut gives us one. Epson didn't give us one though. And I think that maybe, um, I feel like the, the, the um, I got them with some of the more expensive printers, but these cables do cost money. So they're probably trying to economize. All right, so it goes right back here. You see it? It should be, oh, I'm not sure if it's, which one it is. I have to like really look to see. I'm gonna turn it towards me so I can see first which one it might be. It looks like it's the bottom one. Can you still see that? So we can both see it as I'm doing this. Just keep turning it until you get it the right way. Because though USB, see it's got like, it's, it's like a different shape. Let's see if I can tell. Looks like this way maybe. There we go. All right, so it's in there. This one up here would be the ethernet right here. And then if you have a fax, one with a fax capability, you would also see like a telephone line. So I don't know. we can fax online these days. That's the best way. If you really need to send a fax, there's services online. You don't need to hook up your printer to a phone line. That is so 90s. I remember when faxes came out and they were so cool. <laughs> All right. So that is connected. And then I have a uh, extension cord for my USB right here that's connected to my Mac. And here's the other line. And I know it's got a Cricut logo. You can switch, flip, flip it over so no one sees that. It doesn't matter. It's still a USB cable, okay? All right, so it is connected. All right, so we have that connected to our computer. Let's actually progress through here a little bit. And it looks like I missed a step. All right, we're gonna we're gonna backtrack a little bit because I'm just getting ahead of myself. So it does say align the print position to fix misalignment and bending. Like I didn't see any issues. Like I don't. I mean, I don't think I need to do this. Uh, I don't think I, I'm gonna just say print later because everything looked good to me. You can do this if you want to, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, so this is all complete. So I click OK. Select paper size and type for your paper source. So if you don't select it here and then you keep like doing something, it'll keep reminding you every single time what paper or you're using the wrong paper and is it OK? So pay attention to this and try to set your default so that of what you're mostly going to use. This comes up a lot for me because I keep forgetting to switch mine. But so eight and a half by 11 is good and paper type plain paper probably not good right so you if you're doing um if for example you're doing sublimation uh, you're usually not printing to plain paper so you might want to change this right now to match or be sure to come back later and change it but since i'm using this as an office printer i am going to use plain paper so i'll keep it on there so all that looks good so i'm going to go back up to done and press done there we go. Okay, so now this is our screen ready for us to go ahead and install our software. Okay, so installation of software. So we've connected it via USB. Remember you can do USB or you can do wireless, looks like Wi-Fi, or you might be able to do ethernet if that is your preference. But most everyone I think is probably most of you are probably going to want to do Wi-Fi, uh, but I'm going to re really recommend, if possible, you do USB. It is the most reliable. I've had issues in the past with Wi-Fi. It just, it kind of, it's just like, or if you have issues, switch to USB. How's that? We'll say that. Uh, but after this, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So let's make sure we're on the net right step. I'm looking for where are we supposed to go, sorry. <laughs> for the latest software, visit epson.com slash support. Okay, so we're gonna switch over to our web, our browser window. 
All right. So let's type in, can you see my bar up there? You can. All right, so we're gonna go to epson.com slash support. All right, so search by product name. And this is, and the, it's like right on the very front, if you don't remember what your number is. So this is an ET3830. Let's see if that works. Yep, there it is. Epson ET3830. Looks just like this. That's good. All right, so downloads. Okay, operating system. So I am currently on a Mac. If you're on Windows, you want to choose it. So check what operating system you have and then select it from this menu. So I have Mac OS 12.x right now. Um, it looks like it works with all of these, which is really quite a lot. All right, there we go. And then press go. And I think it will download the software. Oh, it gives us, here we go. It gives us the the link to download it. So we want to click on download. All right, so it downloaded there. So let's go find it. Okay, here it, can you see that? You can't see that, sorry, one moment. Find my finder. There we go. So here it is. Let me put away this screen here. It's just confusing for you. That's my, my little button controller. And I'll make this window bigger too. So we have everything all in one spot. There we go, okay. So once it downloads, you wanna go find it. And then and for mine was right here. I'm gonna double click on that. You could also probably like right click and choose open. It'll, on the Mac, it, it tells you it's downloaded from the internet. Are, are you absolutely sure you wanna open it? And I am sure. If for any reason you try to open it and you have a problem, you can go into your settings and it's a security issue. So you can just say, okay. All right, I would like it to install files, yes. And it's, yes, it's all good. Totally want it to do this. <laughs> if you've ever been, like, so if you are on, um, like, when you're when you first get your computer, it usually has the strictest security settings. So on Mac, it doesn't want you to download things without unless they're absolutely sure they're safe. The same is true on Windows. Many new Windows computers will come in S mode. I think S means safety. If you are having a problem ever installing software, it's, it's you know, like you can take it out of S mode. There are tutorials online to do that. So if that sounds familiar to you, if you're having a problem installing something, Cricut Design Space is one of those things that you cannot install on a Windows um, 11 that's in S mode. You can't do it. You have to get out of S mode, okay? I don't know if this is a problem for Epson or not. I'm just mentioning it. All right, so it wants me to put my password in. I hope you all can't see that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes. Okay, fine. Read read this like a like a good crafter. Okay, I accept it. I've read it before. Um it's fine. They can collect my stuff. They're gonna ask all of this stuff here. Make sure your printer is turned on. It is turned on. Have you finished filling the ink tanks? I have finished filling the ink tanks. So I'm gonna click that little button down there and then click next. Okay, so now we have the three options. It's checking my system environment. Okay, the three options are Wi-Fi, LAN, which is Ethernet, and USB cable. So I actually have all three of these available to me because I do use Ethernet for our live videos. Ethernet is the most, the best way of, it's the, it's the best way to get and like I would never rely on wireless to do a live video, for example. But most people don't have Ethernet in their computers these days. Um, so I'm going to choose connect via USB cable because that's my preference, generally speaking. So I've got that connected. I'm, I click the little button there and then I'm going to click next. And yay, it sees my printer. <laughs> it's always a good sign. If it doesn't, it'll tell you. If it does, it says printer detected. Okay, so... Uh, that's all you need. You just, you just need to make sure it has a connection method. All right, so 
I'm going to leave everything just checked here. I'm not going to like try to get crazy about it. I'm just going to go ahead and click install. Note that it has the printer driver, the scanner driver, customer research, the extent insert, whatever. It's got all this stuff. Let's click install. It's downloading the drivers, all of the extra software I need, all of it. You want to do this. You really, really do. This was what will give you all of the options when you go to print something. This is how I get beautiful prints. This is how I do all the things that you see me do in my videos and like all the options. This is having the drivers is how I do that. Many of you will write in and say, I don't see what you see. Like I have like just print and that's it. Like uh, it doesn't let me select my quality or whatever. So chances are what's missing are your drivers. Okay. So sometimes you do this, but, or, or you tell me you do this and it's still, you're not seeing it. There's nothing wrong with doing it again. Okay. So if it's not, if you, you, you're sure you did it, just go do it again. It's no big deal. Sometimes people will delete their drivers and reinstall them. Um, sometimes, you know, I don't, I have no idea what's going on there, but it's not a bad idea if you're having issues. I'm really happy. This is a big help. Thank you, Colleen. I really appreciate that. Uh, Diane asks if you can, can you or have you changed your ink from Hippo to Printer Jack or do you stay with one in a printer? That's a great question, Diana. This is true of all ink. So generally speaking, whatever ink you start with, you want to stick with. That's just, you know, just keep using the same ink. You'll keep getting consistent results. That said, there are reasons why you might want to change your ink. Uh, you might want to change from the Epson branded ink to a third party ink that's even cheaper, right? Uh, you might want to switch from Hippo to Printer's Jack or something else entirely, right? There are reasons why you might want to switch in the family of, you know, inkjet or sublimation. Uh, my suggestion is to wait until you're almost out of ink before you switch. And then understand that during that, there's going to be a transition period where, you know, maybe your inks aren't quite the same. And, um, and then it's probably fine. That's my suggestion, right? What I wouldn't do is like, it's like half full and I just mix the inks. It's not going to hurt your printer, right? It's not going to hurt it or anything, but you're going to get weird results. So it's best just to wait until everything is out. Um, now I have had people tell me that it's just not that big of a deal, Jennifer. <laughs> like all, like, especially with the sublimation inks, people have told me, and so this is completely hearsay that most of these sublimation inks are just made in the same factory and they're branded under different names and it's just not that big of a deal. And that may be true, but I don't actually know if that's true. So I tend to want to err on the side of caution and tell you to be cautious of mixing your inks because I know that I don't, I don't feel that they are identical. I think that they're, they're, are probably multiple factories, I think. And who knows which one was made in which factory? That's that's what I think the truth is. So you could do it if you want to. You may not notice any difference at all. And if that's the case, that's awesome. Um, but then again, you might. So, <clears throat> all right, uh, how are we doing? Let's see, what did it do? Okay, add printer. So add at the printer you are setting up. The following is the procedure for Mac OS 12, Monterey or later. Um, okay, so it wants me to, I'm gonna move this off to the side here. Let's see, um, click the plus sign on the printers and scanner screen to add, to open add printer. So of course, this is my Mac process, but it's gonna tell you what to do for Windows. It's really easy. Okay, so here we are on the printers and scanner screen and we want to add one. So I'm gonna click this plus button right here. All right, and I see it right here, Epson ET3830, and I just do add, and I do continue, and it's setting it up. This part is usually really easy. This is, I think this is where sometimes when the driver thing can get confusing because it's actually really easy to print the printers. You don't always need the drivers, but if you want the options, you want the drivers. Okay, so, Select the printer you want from the list. It's right here. It says idle. It's last used just never because we've really never used it. All right, let's see if there's anything else it wants us to do. Um, click use. I, I, can't, I think I got all of this. 
This is just for setting it up as like a default, I think. There's lots of stuff here. You could read that if you want, but I think we're good. I'm going to say next. Print a test page. Okay, let's do that. And so I see my printer just turned on. See? All right, now something else I want you to see is that there is a little tray here. Pull this out and then your, uh, your paper won't fall on the floor. <laughs> I always forget to do this. My first one usually falls on the floor, but all of them have something, right? So this is the Epson 2800. It's got this little fold out tray right here. This is the Epson 4760. It looks like the 3800. This is the 1500. It's got a tray right here. You can fold that out here. And I don't know what this one has because I haven't set this one up yet. This one is waiting for me to be set up still. There's its paper tray. And there's its, there's its thing. Yes, so there we go. All of them, pull that out. Pull it out so that you have uh, the, so that your paper doesn't fall on the floor. All right, let's see here. Um, oh, our printer test page. Let's see how it did. Looks great to me. Color is vibrant. Printer name. It's on my, on my iMac Pro. Looks great. So there we go. That's it. So now you have all of the options. You have your, you got everything. If we look back over at the web page, it does say there's a next button updating the firmware. That's not a bad idea to do, huh? <laughs> so let's go ahead and do next. Don't wait. Don't turn off your product, your computer until it's done. It says right on the screen that it is updating, preparing for firmware update. Generally, you always want all of your equipment's firmware to be up to date. So you definitely want to do that. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much so like I realized this that we've been sitting here for like an hour or more but if you weren't talking like as much as I was this would be a really quick process you can do this in like 15 minutes 20 minutes that's it it doesn't take very long to do it all <laughs> I'm still waiting for it to finish though just in case there's another step I don't want to forget like I'm not I'm not the best multitasker so sometimes I'll just be talking and forget to do something important so um yeah, I'm checking to see if there's any problems, right? If you didn't put sublimation ink in your printer or any other third-party ink, you can contact Epson for help. If you put sublimation ink or any other third-party ink in your printer, they're not going to help you. They will initially help you, but they will ask you for a photo of your ink line so they can tell what kind of ink you put in there and they will know. This is not something you can hide from them. They will, they, it's part of their standard diagnostic. <laughs> I know this from, not from my personal experience, but from others who've tried. So just so you know, once you put a third party ink into your Epson, it is no longer under warranty. But you know something? We are happy to help you. And by that, I mean the entire Jennifer Maker community. We use so many Epson eco tanks um, and we have these, our Facebook groups are huge and they're filled with people who use them. If you get stuck and have a problem, come to either Cricut Crafters and Makers if you're using your, your printer with inkjet ink or come to Sublimation Made Easy if you're using your printer with sublimation ink. Describe your problem in as much detail. Let us know which one you have, what kind of ink you put in. Be, be really specific, this really helps. Let us know what problem you're experiencing, what you've tried already, and we can help you out. It's still updating the firmware. So I'm gonna make sure it does this. Who here has an Epson? I see people in chat saying they, I mean, EcoTank. Who here has an Epson EcoTank? I would love it to know, because I know many of you do have them. When Which one do you have? And do you like it? This is useful information, let us know. Uh, lots of people I see. There was a question, <laughs> Connie says, I wish. I'm pretty sure one of our prizes is an Epson Eco Tank. So, so be sure you enter our giveaway because we're totally giving away an Epson Eco Tank. 
And you remember they go on sale often. I'm going to put up my list here. This link that you see right here, jennifermaker.com slash ecotanks, this link leads to my shopping list over on Amazon, and you will often find them at excellent prices on Amazon, frequently. It's not like once a year, it's not like only on Black Friday or something, it's frequent. So, and we often will tell people when we notice them on sale too. So it's a great place. Amazon's a great place to get them. But I've also gotten them at Staples, Office Max, Walmart, all the places. Epson Ecotanks are everywhere. So, oh, look, it finished. <laughs> I think, according to my screen, it has. I'm still waiting over here. Um, but it, everything looks good. You can see here, we're back to our regular main window where we have the options for copy, scan, maintenance. Maintenance is where you'll want to go if you come to print and you and you something doesn't look right. Like a, everything is green or everything is red. Usually that means there's a clog. And so you'll want to go into maintenance. Uh, then touch screen, Jennifer. <laughs> Press OK. And you'll want to do a print head nozzle check. Right? The print head nozzle check will look like this one that we did earlier. And it'll let you know whether you have an issue and which color you have an issue with, okay? So you'll wanna start there. Be, you can do print head cleanings, it's fine to do some of those. Be cautious of the power cleanings. It's the power cleanings that waste a lot of ink and fill up your maintenance tank, okay? There are things that you can do before you get to the power cleaning to fix your computer. Like one of the things I'll do, or sorry, fix your printer. One of the things I will do is I have a, um, a printer purge page. You can search for that over on my blog, jennifermaker.com. And you can just print out pages of colors and it'll force the ink through your lines and it'll go onto the paper instead of into your maintenance tank. And often that helps. So that's my recommendation for this. Uh, Cynthia says, for some reason, the, the yellow won't show you probably have a clog and that's what you should do. So do a print head cleaning or two right? And then if that still doesn't work, try a printer purge page of just yellow. And that should do the trick. Okay, cool. Did we do it? Did we play test our Epson? So now we have, I have a new uh, printer here for our studio for like printing regular pages. Um, we're not using this as a sublimation printer. We're using it as a regular printer. It stays under warranty so long as I keep using Epson products. Now remember, like I said earlier, you want to keep your um, printer plugged in and turned on. I mean, if you're going away for a long time, that's a different story, but you know, like a way, away a long time, you know, like you winter in Florida or something, <laughs> that's that kind of thing. Uh, but then you'll still have to worry about clogs when you get back. But the reason that you want to keep your printer plugged in and turned on is that is it's better for the printer in general. It will it will give it the longest life, okay? You don't want to be constantly turning it on and off. Every time it does that, it does extra stuff that I don't remember right now. But I do know we want to keep our printers turned on, okay? And then print to it regularly. Try to print at least once a week. If you, um, you can just print the maintenance page. You don't ever have to use your computer or your phone. Just come on over here, tap on maintenance and have it do a print head nozzle check. It hardly uses any ink, but it uses all four colors and it will push your ink through your lines and it will keep things working well. Super easy to do, okay? Just set yourself a reminder or better yet, just make stuff with it and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, and this is true of whether it's inkjet or sublimation. You really want to be printing regularly. If you forget to do it or you just have an issue, you'll want to work on fixing your clog using the maintenance. Okay, sound good? What questions have I missed? <laughs> I'm going to look and see what, what I might have missed here. What do you do if you have lines through your pictures? Excellent question, Phyllis. If you have lines through your printers, there's typically two reasons for that. Either you have a clog, right? So one of your colors is off, right? So do that printer head nozzle printer, whatever it was called again, sorry. Hang on, I'm getting the right term. Do that print head nozzle check to see if one of your colors is, it might not be completely gone, but just gone enough that it causes a line, okay? 
Or what's more likely is that you are printing on one of the settings that is not intended for a full color. Okay, so if you're on like fast printing or any anything that's not the best quality, you can get lines. That's that, that's that simple. So you'll want to um, check your when you go to send a project, make sure that your quality is on best. Okay, if you're printing on best and you still have lines, you probably have a clog somewhere. So go back to your print head nozzle check, find out where your which which color or multiple colors is having an issue. Do a print head cleaning or two to see if that fixes it. If that doesn't fix it, move on to a printer purge file, okay? It's where you just print colors to like push ink through your lines and get rid of that clog. All right, hopefully that helps that problem. Can you print several prints ahead of printing? How long can you keep them prior to using on your projects? So if you were doing sublimation, which I think is what you're asking when you ask that question, you can totally print as far in advance as you want. There is no expiration date, to my knowledge, on a printed uh, sheet. 10 years, maybe, maybe, you know, but probably you're not waiting 10 years, okay? Like maybe, you know, it's possible. So it's totally fine to print things, store them in somewhere where out of light, you know, because um, UV and any any kind of ink, then they never go together very well, right? So just put them in like a file folder or something. Also keep them away from like a lot of moisture. That's moisture and ink also don't aren't friendly. They're totally not BFFs. So keep them somewhere dry, somewhere dark, and keep them flat, and then you can use them. No problem. So if you want to just print a project that you like, like think that you might you know, do a sublimation print of in the future, it's totally fine to do that and then just keep it for later. <clears throat> Rachel says, on sublimation, can you print on normal paper to do the maintenance print only so you're not wasting good sub paper? Totally, yes. You, your printer doesn't know really what paper you stuck in it, right? It's just, it's, there. there is some times it does matter, but generally, for especially for your maintenance, it doesn't matter what kind of paper you're using. Just put in regular old paper in there when you're doing any of your printer maintenance. Just you can use regular paper. All right. I hope that you found this comparison between the Epson Eco Tanks useful. If you have any questions at all, please let us know. Leave a comment below this video, and I or my team would be more than happy to help you out. I also invite you over to my Facebook groups, Cricut Crafters and Makers. If you're doing at Cricut Crafting, that's at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters or our sublimation group at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. Those are both excellent places to ask questions and learn more about using your Epson Eco Tank. We have probably tens of thousands of people using Epson Eco Tanks in our groups. I'm not exaggerating. We have many Epson Eco Tank users and we are more than happy to help you out if you get stuck or have a problem or want to do something unusual that, you know, you're just not sure about how to do, we can help you out. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.